Hey, how's it going? Great to see you. Welcome back to the studio. In my last video, if you've watched it, you'll know that we assembled this fella. It's a Berserker Minotaur. Awesome detail in this this figure and today what we're going to do is finish off a couple of details on here and then we're going to go out and base coat it and paint it and make it look really cool but before i do that there's a couple of things i need to do first of all there's this base that i made on it it's it's quite cool it didn't come with a base i thought i'd scratch build one but it needs a couple of details sorted out still so what I'm going to do is make some green stuff up and I'm going to put it in here in that small gap underneath the hoof. I don't know if you can see that terribly easily, but yeah, there's a little gap underneath there and um, the same just around here underneath that hoof so that it tidies the whole thing up. So it just looks a lot neater. The base that I made is out of a two part polymer resin. So I've just handcrafted that and put it together. I did set it up so that this hoof was up on this rock and this one was down on the ground. And that meant that they're slightly not level on the ground, which is why I'm going to put the green stuff underneath to balance it all out. But once I've got that done, I'll take it outside, spray bomb the whole thing with a Citadel base coat, which I find really good too paint on make sure that the rest of my paint adheres to it properly then i'm going to take this small collection of skulls and horns and things that i've got here and i'm just going to glue them in around parts of the base here just to make it look a little bit cooler now the putty i'm using is milli putt which is a two-part epoxy resin clay kind of thing that's basically it's made for sculpting and i've got a block of it here I've already mushed together so it's it's gone to that terracotta color and what I'm going to do is just pull off just that little tiny bit on the end there and roll it between my fingers and get this into that little gap under the rear hoof there that you can probably see just down under under here to do that I'm going to need my dental tools so I'll just open this up and I'm going to pull this one here out because that's got uh, a nice pointy tip on the end of it and I can use that just to pick up that piece of material there and guide it up underneath the hoof at the back. And I'll just massage that in under the gap and make it look like a, a piece of the terrain. See exactly what I'm doing, there's a good angle. Just poking that in underneath the hoof. What I might do is just put a, a little bit more of this off. And I'll put that in there and make it look like a part of the terrain itself. Do the same sort of thing around the back, level it in. You wanna make sure you don't have any nasty flat bits of surface and just make sure that it all blends in and now i'm going to do the same thing up around the other hoof as well i'm just going to massage it in underneath the hoof so that it looks like it's part of that boulder that way the hoof's not sort of floating up in midair and there we go just push that in where we want it to be okay now that all of that's done i'm going to take the figure outside and i'm going to spray bomb it i've got a citadel base coat spray can it's going to get really good coverage and it'll make sure that when we paint this in a moment all the paint's going to adhere to it properly and not run off okay now i've got all that sorted out and it's all base coated we're ready to go i'm going to start by um giving the follower a good base color coat nothing incredibly detailed and nothing too light or too dark i just want to go and give it a a, a really rough coloring and then i'm going to give it a bit of a wash and that's going to show me where a lot of detail is that i want to capture more stuff into later on the paints i'm using are these vallejo paints because uh, it's just a, a really good color palette for doing all these sorts of things and i went and got a set that were for painting beasts basically so um i'm gonna start with this brown sand because not necessarily that it's exactly the right color i want to head towards um but uh it, it's going to give me a good starting point i'm just going to put a couple of drips in the palette here a little bit of water on my brush not too much so that um, this just spreads and fills into the gaps quite well and i'm using a, a really coarse brush to do this with when you're doing this sort of work it's a great opportunity to get in and study a lot of fine detail on the figure that you're painting it's quite easy with these large figures um, you see a lot of it up front quite easily but when you're working with smaller figures um, it's really hard to see detail when it's just a base coat but when you're coming around here with a, a brush in your hand and you're getting in and you're getting the paint into the crevices of all the muscles for example 
and you're painting around these skulls on the on the chest of the figure then you really have a, a good opportunity to see where everything is and what all of these things in the molding are and have a bit of a think about how you're going to color them later i'm looking at these things on his arms and i'm thinking is that leather strapping or metal strapping obviously this is metal here but then i'm wondering to myself um is it like a a, a rough iron or is it quite a, a bright bronze or something a prize that he's got um obviously there's these bits of metal plate around here are going to be probably tempered steel whereas this might be sort of more of a gunmetally kind of thing and just sort of getting into some of these gaps and seeing where the edges are and it's when you're getting into all of these places that you start to realize what it is that you you, you are actually painting and how the figure has been designed and all these bits that are on it there's the bits of fabric down here for example and there's these rings in here um, little bits of little flash of chain mail that is probably stripped off the body of something he's killed and just added to his belt for a little bit better protection the tail is that going to be like a, a darker with a fine fine fur or something on it or is it just going to be bare bare skin googling some of these things is actually a very good idea as well i did that when i painted some hyena recently i went and had a look at all the different species of hyena and the colors and everything and worked out which was the the best i copied that for that set and i learned a lot about hyena as well all right just going to get a, a bit more of the paint out and i don't like to get too much of the paint out at once partly because i don't want to waste any and partly because it does dry reasonably quickly i've been using a huge number of different types of paint over time the humbrols which is all you used to be able to get at model shops there wasn't anything else and then there were the tamiya paints that came out when um, the tamiya plastic models arrived and they were a much better quality paint because they weren't going to melt the plastic on your figures like the enamels did uh, house paints test pots and stuff they they were around for a while and and quite popular because they were once again a, a much better color range than you could get in anything else nothing really purpose built for figures and then suddenly the citadel paints turned up and and everything changed i've actually gone and stripped the paint off a lot of my old figures so that i can repaint them that had the really nasty paints on them right this is looking good i'm sort of learning where there are bits of fabric now that sort of thing in the belts as well and some other strapping around them into the fur on the legs and see how they go down I'm going to want to sort of I think paint that make that fur a bit darker and then some lighter brown dried mud up onto them or something along those lines I think that's the sort of thing I'm going to want to think about that's one of the cool things about resin prints as well is that um, they can get shapes into resin prints that are near impossible to to deal with if you're molding so the horns up here obviously they're going to be an ivory um, but I'll put a, a dark base on them and sort of feather that out as it goes up into the into the um tip of the, towards the tip there's gaps up under the armpits and things here i'm going to want to get okay that's quite good that's uh let me see a lot of detail and where i've got a couple of bits of this um chain mailed here and there's another bit under here i'm sort of thinking about the type of metal that i want on the axes oh, of course there's a bit of timber that just comes up around the end here that's the kind of detail that's really useful to get to see okay so there he is he's uh, looking pretty good and with a bit of color on him um, still a bit glossy where it hasn't dried off yet you can start to see some more shape and that's going to be even more so I'm just going to uh, pause the video for a while and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do a wash on it which is going to be a darker color than what i've got here okay that's had about 15 20 minutes to sit and cure what i'm going to do now is get a slightly darker brown and i'm going to make a wash out of that so here i've got this heavy sienna i'm just going to put a few drops of that down here on my palette the palette by the way is just a plastic takeaway container lid that's all i use for these things there we go now i'm just going to add a few brush loads of water to that and um, make it fairly clear i just want it to run into 
as many of the crevices as I can. I'm not trying to get a surface coat out of this paint. What I'm hoping I'll see here is that it's just going to fall into the crevices and depths for me so that it'll just bring up some more shape and then I can start thinking about what I want to highlight in different colors as well. I'm actually grabbing more water here than I am the pigment so this is a fairly large and loose brush so it's floating around quite loosely and it works really well for when I'm applying a, a very broad wash like I am here. As you can see it's starting to bring out some of the detail by getting into the gaps and shadow areas and um, it's really showing up a lot more of the texture of the piece and I'm also going to get a bit around on the base here as well. There's a lot of stuff on the base here is actually going to be rock rather than dirt of course but um, the rock always has a lot of dirt and brown and other colors in it anyway. If you go and pick up some rocks off a um, out of a river bed or something like that you'll see that there's a lot of different color in it. Okay this is looking pretty good down into all of these little gaps and shapes and stuff in here and you can see here around the eye what I mean so just washing a lot of that surface pigment off and I'm going to then let this sit again for another 15-20 minutes or something like that okay so we've uh, let that sit and cure for another 20 minutes and um, as you can see it's got a lot more shape and stuff into it again the shadows are a little bit darker with that wash we put in it's mellowed out a bit though it's not particularly heavy shadow so what i'm going to do is um just pick up two more paints i've got here the first paint i'm going to use is this umber wash which as you can see is a nice deep ready brown and to give that a little bit more tone i'm going to add in some of this beastie brown so the com combination of those two should come up quite nicely and i'm going to want to darken it a little bit more than that so that it stays nice and deep when the paint cures and dries so i'm going to just add in a bit of the black wash as well now these washes are already um, fairly watery washes but i will add a heap more water to them because I don't want any of this sitting on the surfaces I just want it going right down into the crevices and um, that should make for a really nice wash and bring up even more detail than we did before and as you can see now that we've added all of that together I've got this nice dark brown very light wash and I'm going to start going over some of the more textured areas of the uh, of the figure and see if we can just get that to create some deeper shadows for us so there we go, you can see that just falls quite nicely into those crevices there. Basically it's doing the same as we just did but with a deeper, a deeper shade to bring a bit more up. And that's just going to give us a lot more shape. I'll just quickly run around that and keep adding more water like last time. Because it's mostly water, it's just going to evaporate off and leave a very fine amount of pigment in the shadows which is great because with less pigment in there it's not building up any bulk so it's not clogging up all of the fine fine detail it um, doesn't fill up gaps because the the water component of it all just completely disappears now this is actually taking me about uh, 10 minutes to get this all done but thanks to the magic of movie making it's um, only going to take you a minute or two to watch it all um, and as you can see that's already showing us a lot more detail than we had before i'm just going to use a bit more water here and really sink the um, bit of pigment that we really want into the fine crevices and everything it's really looking quite quite beasty already later on i'm going to come over this with a, a sort of a dark flesh so that the skin tones have that that fleshiness to them as opposed to where we're going to have the mane and the fur and so we'll, we'll differentiate those then by bringing those tones in i've got this really nice dark flesh here which is going to be great on the tail and i'm going to be able to um, balance that out a bit with this um, cadmium skin and i've got a few other uh, different golden browns and things like that that i can uh, 
used to layer that up as well and I should be able to get some really neat effects in. Okay that's looking pretty complete from the um, wash perspective. I'm quite liking that. Um, I'm going to let that sit again and it'll mellow out. And as you can see we've got some really nice shadow up around the rope, up around the main. Um, I'm probably going to go for a bit of blacken around the main as well and then highlight that with a with a car key or something maybe. I'm not sure yet. I might experiment a wee bit with that. And um, we've got some really nice shadow tone around the, the muscle area. And if I come up with those flesh tones that I was talking about before around the muscle, around the tail... Um, I can see they've got the, the fabric of the pants here, the pants here, which is held up by the belt, but it's stretched down under the tail. It's got to be awkward trying to wear pants when you've got a tail on. Well, it's, it's more of a, I guess it's more of a, a cloth or a loincloth that comes around, isn't it? But um, yeah, that's looking quite fantastic in there. And as you can also see here on top of the head, that really brings out all that texture. And if I dry brush that again later on with something a bit lighter, which I'll be doing, um, once again that's just going to bring out an enormous amount of detail this brown is going to be really good as a base color for the skulls as well because it's going to show up aged bone and I'm actually going to put some into the end of a broken horn here that's a good idea too because um, this brown wash will be sort of the color that the um, that the uh, inside of the bone will look like okay so i think that's probably a, a damn good day's work um it's really shiny at the moment so it's not coming up that great on camera but uh later on that'll be looking absolutely spectacular it'll keep enough of that shadow around the rope around the straps the belt detail um and in the texture of the timber on the the axe halves and that sort of thing so and also up around the the head and the face and the eyes that's going to be that's going to i'm really getting excited about this now and um that'll do for today so i'm going to leave the video here with this one here we've given it um, a really nice base coat we've built a stand um we've been experimenting and learning the figure and that's a, a really big part of all of this and a big reason to do these washes and base coats is to really learn all of the detail of the figure because that's what you, you're going to be painting all of this detail so you need to know what's there early on and now and how it all fits together and the flow of the fabric from one place on the body to another so that you don't end up painting the same piece of fabric two different colors and then realizing it was one piece of fabric later that sort of thing you know where I'm going. So I'm going to let this dry overnight and let the paint really cure on it and really let that pigment sink in. And then we'll start getting in on some of the hardware and the detail and get some more colour in there tomorrow as well. Uh, might be one or two more videos out of this, I think, yet. So, um, yeah, it's going to make for a great series. Um, if you're keen on getting one of these, I'll put some links down in the description below, by the way, and if you want to ask any questions or make any comments or have any ideas for painting things like this, put them into the comment section below. I do read all of those things. And um, don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button. You can hit here to subscribe, by the way. Don't forget the notify bell, that's important. And there's this video and this video as well that you should keep an eye on because they're things that you're interested in obviously because youtube picked them for you anyway i will see you in another video really soon continuing the painting of this see you later